Instead of having you get Nani back fully training now for the, the hamstring, good to go for the game, do you think? Yeah, should be uh, all good. Uh, trained fully last week and then also yesterday and this morning. So, you know, body's back to 100%, so ready to go for this weekend. And exciting challenge ahead. How frustrating was it on the, the opening weekend to, to get that right on was it the, the eve of the game against Wales? Yeah, uh, just towards that end of the week, things didn't go right. And then probably the first time I've had to face an injury since I've made my Leinster debut. I think it was the first game I've missed or not been available for. Um, so that was a bit of a challenge to get over. But, you know, I think showed that, you know, we have a lot of squad depth and also there's a lot of competition for places because, uh, you know, one person misses out and, you know, two lads are well capable of building in. And then when you see, you know, the likes of Ron and Stephen up and, and Ron Herring coming in, yeah. you know, you know, it's it's a tough one missing out these when you see players coming in and excelling as well. Yeah, especially you know to miss a home game in the Aviva of, of that, you know against France the the game we lost last year. Um, it's obviously on a personal level probably tough missing those games, but you know I think the squad depth we've shown and and it's important over the next year or so that squad depth is at the front of our minds and uh, so I think it's a positive maybe to take from it. And just Ross and yourself off the back of the France game, you got a good. 30 plus minutes, and I presume happy with how things went out there? Yeah, well, we won, so that's obviously the, the most important thing. Um, obviously, I was delighted to get a uh, good bit of game time and obviously get the win and get the bonus point. Uh, sets us up well for, for the next few weeks. And can you tell us right here right now where you're starting this weekend? You'll have to find out. <laughs> Ross, you've had 16 appearances for Ireland so far, two starts. This will be your third start. If it does happen for you this weekend. How big of a moment would it be for you? Uh, yeah, it would be big, but like it's uh, just treat it like I normally would. You know what I mean? Um, I've played a lot of games this year, and I'm pretty happy with how how that's gone and my preparation. So uh, if I am, I'll be doing anything too too different. I don't know if you listen to any of the media or anything that's said, but. I suppose there's a lot of talk of how much you've improved as a player over the last number of years. Why do you think that is, or has anything changed for you? Um, look, it's just little bits and pieces. Like you know what I mean, it hasn't been one big change. Um, obviously, over the last couple of years, I, I've played a lot of games as well, and some of them have been big games, a couple of big losses as well, and you learn pretty harsh lessons. You know what I mean? But it's trying to just take. Um, bits of experience and, and improve each day um, and that's something I, I've, I've tried to do and I think it's gone pretty well over the last year or so. And you've had to, I suppose, buy your time, the number 10 position, it's a tough one to, to get into obviously with Johnny in there um, and there's obviously the likes of Jack Crowley coming through, Joey Carberry. So for you mentally, has that been a challenge to, I suppose, keep your, your mind set on trying to break in there? Um, it hasn't really changed anything, you know what I mean, like there's competition across the board in every position but like it's the same in Leinster, you know what I mean, there's, you're dealing with that competition every day so um, I haven't really been worried about what the other lads are doing because I can't control that, I've really just been looking after my own performances and trying to get the best out of myself. And how much are you enjoying being back a part of the, the Ireland setup? Yeah, it's brilliant, yeah, like absolutely love them being back and I think like the last two performances you can see how good they've been and obviously there's a lot more room for growth as well which is hugely exciting. Thank you. Ross, does it give you an extra sort of edge, you know, when you are fighting for that place and taking more drop the camp the last couple of years, you hear, you know, you moved up and down, does it give you that extra drive and, and kick you need? Yeah, I think when you're not in, um, in the squad and you see the squad doing so well, you want to be part of that, you know what I mean, everyone wants to be playing in the biggest days and you want to be part of a winning team, so um, it definitely, I suppose, it gives you that probably a little bit of edge um, that you, you strive to get back into the team. And now that you are in the position that you're in, have you found just your personal confidence in your game when you step out there has grown? Uh, yeah, it's definitely like it's definitely a confidence booster. You know what I mean, when you get back in the squad, um, and then obviously trying to get as much game time as possible. And as I said before, like I'm not trying to do anything too different. Um, I've been very happy with how I've been going, but it's trying to do what I've been doing and just grow a little bit bits and pieces to that. Uh, yeah, well, obviously I spoke about this a while ago, obviously before I got the call, or in November, you know what I mean, there was definitely times when I thought maybe I'd never get back in, um, but like, just have to be patient, which uh, isn't always easy, um, and then hopefully if you do get an opportunity, you just have to try and make the most of it. What, what were the first stops in this particular competition? Um, 
I haven't really thought about that to be honest. Um, to be honest, for me, it would just be about trying to get a win for the team. That's the most important thing in a good performance. And you, as Ross was saying, you, when you were injured, did you feel that that, that maybe Graham catch up? You, you saw the other hookers coming in and doing well. Or what was your feeling? No, I, you know, I think I've probably just missed one game. I haven't missed a training session. So I have, I've still been around the squad, obviously, to miss a game of that standard is, is huge. But, you know, I think, you know, to get back this quickly, I, you know, I'm pretty happy with how, how I've dealt with it personally. And then, you know, to, to flow back into the squad, I'm pretty happy that, you know, we go, we have another chance this week. Yeah, it's pretty competitive there now. I know Thomas went back to Ulster, but there's yeah. three of you there all fighting for starting Chelsea. Yeah, and I think all of that, you know, probably a few years ago there wasn't as much depth in the hooker position and now all of a sudden there's a good few lads, uh, young lads coming through uh, of world-class standards. So I think it's probably the best, you know, that if people might get too comfortable if they don't have someone pushing in behind and there's certain, certainly people pushing in behind. So uh, I think it drives standard and makes sure that we keep it competitive. Yeah. How, much, uh, how much do you think luck pays, pays a role just with the injury? Because Rob obviously is, is recovering, you're coming back and... You know, Rowan was out for a while. You know, the timing of your injuries is quite important about who gets the shirt. Does that play a role in there? I think I think it's part of the game. You know, it, especially the modern game, injuries will, will come around to everyone, and it's how you deal with them. Um, obviously, there's some instances where you can be in the right place at the right time and be fit at the right time. Um, but you know, I think create your own look almost, and you know, I don't think look is a big part of international rugby. You know, the challenge of Italy, it's all um, it's all that boy has been this weekend. Obviously, they're able to fair play, suppose, uh, compared to 12 months ago, because of some of the results and forms that they've been since then. Yeah, no, I think if you if you watch their two last games, you know, they they have some seriously good attacking rugby, um, some dangerous individuals, but they're also playing some nice shape. Um, so I think, you know, our focus is on making sure we stick to our systems. Um, and I think sometimes. Maybe you can be tempted on trying to solve problems yourself, but they're definitely a dangerous threat in, in the wider challenge as well. So uh, we'll be focused on, on making sure we stick to our processes and, and don't take the foot off the gas uh, from the first two performances. Dan, I, I know it's difficult because Ross is sitting beside you, but if I could try and just pick your brain. You played a lot with him across. A lot of people at Leicester who maybe need to be introduced to Johnny Sexton here. You played an awful lot with this guy. Can you just tell us what he's like under pressure or what you've seen in the market, something you've admired or something that you've had a fight with him on well with? Uh, no, I think Ross, you know, like, I haven't had a fight with him yet, um, but, you know, over the last few years I've probably played m most of my rugby uh, under Ross at 10, so, you know, I think, you know, probably the media were a bit harsh on him over the last few years, because from what I saw I inside the doors uh, of Leinster in Ireland was someone who's calm and, and make, can make plays happen, um, you know, it's, everyone I think is really comfortable with him on both teams playing, um, so... You know, I, don't, I don't know which, which sport to pick as an analogy, but as, as somebody who's, if you don't mind me saying so, slightly reinvented to play and playing hooker, you, you just have a little bit wider than anybody else. Um, what do you make of this guy's cross kicking? He's got soccer type cross kicking, isn't he? or GAA type cross kicking. Like yeah, I think he has everything in the locker, you know, um, his game control and his, his ability to see space and, and manage the, uh, the pack around him. I think, you know, most good tens have it, and Ross definitely has it, so. Uh, you know, I've always found it comfortable playing with Ross, um, and I was glad to see him come back into the squad. Do you, do you, do you, are you comfortable with catching that, that, that ball on the wing, or do you go up to head it? Definitely go up to head it anyway. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's something we, we've probably been working on a little bit, making sure you know, you're, you're practicing positions that you are. You might find yourself uh, in the game in training. So. Ross, did you have your most comfortable weekend for a long time last weekend, or your most nervous weekend last weekend? You've, you've changed, your, your position has changed in the constellation, if you like. Uh, we think you're starting, and I guess that we think you're starting. Did you have a comfortable weekend? What did you do? Or? Uh, it was just a pretty normal weekend, to be honest. Uh, obviously, we didn't have a game, um, so obviously we trained hard here last week. Um, uh, so it's just a bit of time to relax, to be honest, and especially with the next few weeks, will will be pretty intense. So. If, if I remember correctly, you were a horrendous Manchester United fan. Is that another like, half of the Man United fans? That right? Yeah, it's all going well, isn't it? Yeah, you watch them tonight. I mean, is, is that part of the build-up? Do you watch? Do you watch sport as part of the build-up? Uh, I'd watch a good bit of sport. Yeah. Manchester United. Yeah. Dan, do you see yourself as a try-scoring hooker? I mean, yourself and Roman tend to get a few between you, or is that important playing your position? No, I don't see myself as a try-scoring try hooker. I don't think it's something you can focus on. Um, 
as being a try scoring hooker. I think I'm comfortable in the wider channels. I I enjoy running with the ball. I feel that skill set's good. Um, but I don't think you know you can focus on being a try scorer. I think those opportunities will come when you play the shape and you stick to your processes. But if you go outside trying to look for tries, you just get in the way and, and it sort of goes against the team. You, you, you always seem to get the back of those rolling balls and stuff, the ball in the hand. So yeah. perhaps the, the structures suit the way you play? Yeah, I think you know, the way that maybe our teams are attacking at the moment, we end up just flopping over at the back. We don't do a whole lot. Um, and then there's the odd try we might get somewhere else. But you know, I think it's probably you know the the hype of maybe try records is just purely out of luck almost that we've been the ones that flop over at the end. So you're not looking at Romans try tally in your own and No. No, nothing like that. No. Sorry, last question, Dave. Um, the whole skill set that you have is sort of more modern than maybe <coughs> years of ten years ago, where you you are running, you are carrying, you are, you are on the scrum. Is that absolutely required these days? All of those things. I think it's the way the game's probably going. Um, you look at all the good teams at the moment, and they have forwards that have the ability to to pass the ball um, and sort of show their skills under pressure. Um, you know, I think you still have to be able to do the basics. You still have to be able to front up, win collisions. Um, but I think you know the way that attacking sort of rugby is going at the moment. I think it definitely helps. It's more enjoyable to play that way. It's, it's the, the only way I've ever really played, you know, I would have played a lot of tip and stuff as a kid, just out of fun, so that would, that would have helped, but, you know, I think, yeah, I enjoy rugby, which is with the ball and being able to sort of express your uh, skill set in, in the wider channels, even. Do you have anything you can specifically tell us about HB West? I mean, you, you play there regularly at club level, the, the one team is improving, one team isn't, I don't know, what, what do you make the overall system? Yeah, well, I think Dan alluded to it earlier. I mean, the last two performances have been pretty good. Um, they're a very well coached team. They like to keep the ball for for a lot of phases. You know what I mean? And they have some serious threats out wide in their in their pack as well. So um, we'll definitely have our hands full. Just before COVID, they won in the ODS. Do you remember that? I did. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> you, went, what, you, you didn't start. Did I not? Can you remember anything about it? Jeez, uh, I don't know. It was a long time ago now. You were on the bench. Actually, we're finished. Yeah, Ross, just on the point that Dan made earlier that he felt that the media has been harsh on you over the years, is that something that you have felt? Uh, it's not really, to be honest. Look, I don't really read too much into media. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, you know what I mean? I've just been looking after myself. I can't control. Um, what the media always says, you know what I mean? So for me, it's just been looking after my own performances.